Good morning, everyone. Chief Mike Scanio here from the Union Fire Department, uh, kicking off Fire Prevention Week. Uh, this year is going to be a little bit different than we're used to. Uh, this is a very exciting time around the Union Fire Department because every year the uh, kids uh, come visit. We come visit the schools. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, we all know what's going on in the world today, so we had to do something a little different. Uh, we thought it would be kind of fun to video our firefighters, uh, giving you the safety tips for home and, and, and your kitchens and, uh, and all kinds of stuff like that, what to do if you catch on fire. I know all the kids know those answers. I I just hope my firefighters know the answers as well because normally I ask you the questions, the kids, but this year we're going to ask the firefighters and see if they can give the right answers. So we're going to have some fun with this. So uh, again, we're kicking off Fire Prevention Week, October 4th to the 10th this week. Uh, it's all about kitchen safety. We'll be upstairs at the firehouse going through our kitchen, showing you some of the do's and don'ts uh, when you're cooking and, and, and having some fun with the family before dinner time to make sure uh, everybody is safe and secure. So we'll be back with you in a minute. back here to uh, the Union Fire Department Fire Headquarters on One Bond Drive. Uh, this year we're going to do something a little different uh, with uh, all the virtual stuff going on. Uh, it is still vitally important that we acknowledge Fire Prevention Week for not only uh, you know us as the firemen, but also the children in the schools, the parents, the teachers, the citizens, the businesses, everybody. So uh, we're going to have a little fun with this. Uh, normally we have visitors here. We have uh, you know kindergartners come and visit our firehouses uh, so I th and ask them questions and they give us the answers and some are right, some are not so right, but we help them through it. So this year I thought we'd have a little bit of fun and, and you know, we'd be ask the questions to my kindergartners. Uh, from, uh, from right to left here, my right to left, we have Firefighter Joe Frain, we have Lieutenant Brian Rockline, we have Firefighter John Sorrentino, and we have Lieutenant Kenny Dehart. So we're going to ask them some questions. Uh, normally our kindergartners, our first graders, even our second graders are pretty good with answering these questions. So let's see how, uh, how your firefighters do. Okay, so uh, before we get started with the question and answer portion of our program here, I uh, just want everybody to, to know about uh, smoke detectors. Obviously, we all know smoke detectors save lives, but they only save lives if they're working properly. So uh, we pulled one out here today. Lieutenant Diart has one, and we want everybody to understand what the sound makes. There it goes. Three beeps. You hear that in the middle of the night? You'll hear it. That means there's something going on inside your house. So first question to Firefighter Frain. You're home, you're sleeping, you're in bed. You hear that smoke detector go off. What's the first thing you're supposed to do? Chief, you want to get out and stay out. Ah, get out and stay out. Very good, Joe. Very good. So that's a correct answer. We want to remind everybody, get out and stay out. Never stay in the house. Hear that smoke detector. Get out and stay out as fast as you can. Lieutenant Rockline, question for you. When do we change batteries and test smoke detectors? Chief, you should change your batteries twice a year. We usually change them, remind people to change them uh, when we change our clocks for daylight savings time. Another correct answer by the members of the Union Fire Department. I'm very proud. So yes, that's twice a year. We always uh, remind everybody that when you change your clocks ahead or back in spring and fall, you change your batteries. Uh, fortunately, anybody who has newer smoke detectors, the newer smoke detectors that you can purchase now through your Home Depots, your Targets, your Lowe's, are all 10-year sealed lithium batteries. So you put them up and you can kind of forget about them for 10 years. But that still doesn't mean that you shouldn't test them. You should at least get up there, maybe once a month, push that button to make sure they work properly. But changing the batteries for the newer ones, you don't have to do that for 10 years. Then you take that smoke detector, you throw it in the garbage, you buy another one. Firefighter John Sorrentino. So the smoke detector goes off 3 o'clock in the morning. Uh, little Johnny runs out the back door and mommy and daddy run out the front door. So what is one of the most important things that before that smoke detector goes off, they should have a discussion about what, what should they be doing? You want to have a specific meeting place where everybody meets, whether it's in the backyard, the front yard, somewhere where you're all together and you can account for everybody inside the house. Another correct answer. Amazing. These guys are amazing. So yes, we want to have a meeting place, and that's something that should be discussed prior to the emergency actually happening. Uh, it is important because as the firefighters arrive to your emergency, uh, we want to make sure that uh, we talk to mom and dad. Is everybody out of the house? And if uh, if you know Johnny's in the backyard and mom's in the front yard, she doesn't realize that, that Johnny made it out of the house. Okay, so, so everybody's out of the house now, smoke detector's going off, um, fire department's on their way, and you realize that you left your pet cat, or you left your Game Boy, I think I'm dating myself with Game Boy, uh, you left your laptop, your iPad, you left something back in the house. Lieutenant Dehart, what, should we be going back in the house? No, Chief. Once you're out, you stay out. You don't want to risk hurting yourself or potentially anything even worse happening by trying to go back inside. 
Exactly right. Four for four, these guys are. I, 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 am, I can't tell you how proud I am of them. So, yes, exactly. You get out, you stay out, you don't go back in. Anything that you could possibly have to go back in for can be replaced. You cannot be replaced. We want to make sure we get out and we stay out and everybody's safe. Fire department will come and do their job. What you do when your clothes catch on fire. So, all you kids at home, you know the three words, but my firefighter is going to remind you. So, what is the first thing you do if your clothes catch on fire, Lieutenant T. Hart? What is the second thing you do, Firefighter John Sorrentino? And the third thing you'll do, Lieutenant Rockline. Stop, drop, and roll. And Firefighter Aldo is going to show you a little demo here. Remember, you cover your face up so the smoke and the flames don't go into your mouth. You stop, drop, and roll. You go back and forth very quickly, and that'll put the flames out so they don't become bigger. Okay, so before we excuse these uh, the four firefighters here to get back to work, um, we want to just discuss with you guys, and I hope everybody knows the answer to this. I hope they know the answer to this. Everybody should know the answer to this. Uh, what is the phone number we call for any type of emergency that you or your family might be having? Okay, welcome back here to the uh, Township Union Fire Department for Fire Prevention Week. Uh, one of the more popular things that we do when the children come to visit us or we come to the schools is to show you what our firefighters look like when we show up to your house in the event and, God forbid, you have an emergency. So we have Firefighter Aldo here. Uh, he's uh, almost ready to go. You'll see he has his uh, his turnout bunker pants on, protects us. Uh, it's got some knee pads because we do a lot of stuff crawling on our hands and knees. He's got his boots, uh, steel, steel toe boots, steel shank in the bottom so we don't step on glass and nails that can hurt our feet because obviously if we get hurt we can't help you um, he has his uh, pass device too which we call that's that little green box there that's an alarm for our firefighters to let other firefighters know uh, if, if firefighter Aldo was to fall through a floor and get hurt and we hear that going off we know that Aldo's in trouble and we would come and help him as well um, so there's a few other items we want uh, firefighter Aldo to put on he's not quite ready to enter that building yet one would be the air tank he's gonna put that on right now uh, what you see there is about a 45 minute bottle gives us about 45 to you know, maybe more like 30 minutes of air time to come in. Uh, a lot of people are under the impression that there's oxygen in that bottle. All that bottle is is really the air that you breathe compressed into a bottle and it gives us about 30 minutes of working time. Uh, oxygen, pure oxygen is very flammable. So there is a little misconception that that is pure oxygen is not. It's just the air that we breathe here naturally and it's put into that bottle for us. Um, so he's not quite ready again. Uh, he needs a little something to maybe protect his head. So we'll show you his helmet. Uh, he has his, uh, his badge number on his shield in the front. Uh, the, the firefighter helmet is actually shaped specifically uh, uh, that way for the back. So, uh, you know, when the water and steam and debris fall from the ceiling, it hits his helmet, rolls off the back, and doesn't go in the back of his coat. So he puts his helmet on. Um, we also have a hood. Uh, Aldo, show them the hood you have on. This is something that he'll put on after he puts his face piece on. This is a hood that protects our our head, our hair, and protects our ears. Our ears are very vulnerable in, in, in high heat conditions. Uh, these hoods were purchased uh, a few years ago through a donation, um, and they are carcinogen blocking hoods. They stop the uh, cancer causing uh, stuff to get into our system. Um, they did a lot of studies on firefighters and cancer, and that a lot of the stuff was absorbed through the skin, through the cheeks and the neck. So these cancer causing hoods, we were very fortunate enough to buy these for all our firefighters to keep them safe. So Aldo, if you want to put the face piece on, uh, we won't be able to see Aldo's face, but maybe that's not a bad thing. We'll have to see. Um, so, but again, this is just to show you guys what we look like. We don't look like the normal person walking into your house. We don't want you to be afraid of him. If you were, if you were stuck in your house and we came to rescue you, you want, we want to ensure you that we're there to help you, and you should run to us and come to us. Don't hide in a closet. Don't hide under a bed. We are definitely there to help you and protect you, and we'll get you outside as quickly as possible. So there's Aldo. He's got his face mask on. Uh, he would plug that in normally into the air bottle. Uh, he could start to breathe air. Uh, he has his hood up, covers his ears. You can see there's really not much exposed up there. Now Elda will put his helmet on. And once that helmet is on, I would say maybe you guys at home can take a better look. But uh, I, I would think he's ready to go inside that building. I think he's totally covered. I think. Maybe. Oh, no, wait. That's right. My mistake. Uh, we missed the gloves, so we ought to put our gloves on. We obviously don't want to burn our hands. Uh, sometimes we walk into these burning buildings where there's fires. I mean, the temperatures could reach up towards 1,000, 1,500 degrees. So we want to make sure that we're very well protected. Again, if we can't protect ourselves, we can't help you. So we want to make sure. Uh, what you also see on the ground in front of Aldo is some tools that he might bring with him, to bend, depending on where he's going. There's a couple uh, hand tools, a, a sledgehammer and a pry bar to get us through doors, to get us through walls. Obviously, we have a flashlight uh, that helps us in the dark, because when you do go into a fire, 
a lot of people are under the impression that when you go into a fire, it's just like the movies where you can see across the room and you see nothing but flame. It's not like that at all. It's very dark. It's very black. It's very smoky. You can't see. So there's Aldo doing some of the things that he would do, uh, busting open those walls to try to see if there's any hidden fire. Uh, we also have a, an extinguisher uh, to his left. Uh, which is really just a pressurized water extinguisher. A lot of times the uh, the first guys in, the truck guys, would go in there and uh, and hit the fire with a water extinguisher to kind of darken it down a little bit before the engine guys came in with the big hose and kind of extinguished the fire. So uh, the extinguishers are, are not always there to put the fire out totally, but to keep it in check. Um, so that's what Firefighter Aldo would look like. That's what any firefighter here in the Township Union or all across the world would look like. So if you're ever in a hotel on vacation here within the Township Union and you're in an emergency, you're in a house fire, and a firefighter comes into your room looking like that, don't hide. Don't, don't be scared. Run to him. Go to him, and he'll take you where safety is. There are quite a few what we will call boo-boos. Uh, no-nos that uh, you should definitely be aware of uh, when doing operating cooking you know in your kitchen so um, firefighter uh, Mike Sanford is going to join me now and is going to start to correct some of the what we call boo-boos that we should definitely be aware of so the first thing we have is the frying pan uh, as we can see the handle is turned out where a young kid could come and knock that over and burn himself we don't want that so firefighter Sanford has corrected that uh, now we will simulate the pan is maybe caught fire from a grease fire. The first thing we want to do is shut the gas off. That's the first thing you do is shut the gas off of the pan and then take the appropriate lid, cover the pan. That'll keep the oxygen from getting to the fire and it'll put the fire out. Again, remember, any type of fire, any type of emergency, the first thing you should be doing is have somebody calling 911, but that's how you fix that. Uh, the second thing we have here is a rag on top of the open flame. We definitely don't want that. Uh, that small fire can turn into something very large and burn, you know, the entire kitchen, which we don't want that as well. Uh, one of the things we do come across quite often is the dreaded pizza box in the oven. Ladies and gentlemen, children, when you're heating your food up in your oven, please make sure it's an oven-appropriate container. Never put a combustible material like cardboard, wood, or paper in the oven. Again, it will heat your pizza up, but it will probably burn the box as well. We want to make sure of that. Uh, behind Firefighter Sanford, we have quite a few electrical issues there. We want to make sure that the appropriate items are plugged into the appropriate plugs. That is a two-plug outlet. We don't want to extend it to three. That is overloaded circuit. could cause an electrical problem, shock somebody, and could cause an electrical fire. As you can see, the crock pot is on, so that would also ruin dinner, which we don't want that as well. And one other thing we want to discuss is we have an electrical appliance, which is the toaster next to the sink, next to running water. Again, water and electric don't mix. Shock, and it could also cause an electrical fire. We want to make sure we keep those corrected. And last but not least, we'll open up the microwave. Somebody inadvertently, I hope, put a metal bowl into the microwave. Remember, everybody, no metal in your microwaves. It sparks. It conducts electricity. It can cause a lot of damage. It can even break the glass on your microwave. Uh, as always, if you come across any of these, correct them as soon as possible and make sure somebody gets to a phone and calls 911. The fire department will come and ensure you, your family, your house, everybody's kept safe.